Hi, in this lecture I'm going to be talking about how we can represent polynomials in quadratic form with a really simple matrix vector expression. This goes with chapter 2.7 of the Deep Learning textbook, but it's not really talked about too much in that chapter. I just wanted to kind of uh, give a primer on this topic because it's going to be really important in our understanding of positive semi-definite and positive definite matrices in the next lecture. So I just wanted to talk about it here. Okay, so let's get to it. So I think first it's important that I clarify what we mean by quadratic form in this context. Because you might be more familiar with something called a quadratic polynomial, which is probably what you've been um, knowing or associating with the term quadratic since about high school. So in, you know, in high school you probably learned that you can represent some parabola in space by a, with a quadratic expression or a quadratic polynomial in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. But we don't really care about the equals zero part. So we just care about this polynomial here. So we often call this like a quadratic polynomial, a quadratic expression, or something like that, because of this x squared term. But actually, a polynomial in true quadratic form is a polynomial in where, where each term has a degree of 2, no more, no less. So notice here that this first, first term does have a degree of 2, so that checks out. But the second one has a degree of 1, and the last one has a degree of 0. So to make this a proper polynomial in quadratic form, we have to get rid of the last two terms. Now we have a proper polynomial, a monomial, in quadratic form. And we call this the unary quadratic form. Unary for 1. Unary quadratic form, and then that graphs some parabola, not like this, but it's going to be something that's centered on the origin now, because there's no constants to make it stray from the origin. So it's going to be something that looks like this. So that's our graph for a unary quadratic form. And this will get to how we can actually represent uh, quadratic form polynomials with matrices and why that's important later on. But uh, I just want to give a good idea of what quadratic form is. So to give a better idea, let's go to the next level, which is binary quadratic form, which represents some kind of bowl shape uh, centered at the origin in 3D space. So let's draw that. It's going to be something like this, right? So now our new, our, uh, what we call binary quadratic form equation is going to be ax squared plus bxy plus y squared. So notice here now we have two variables because we're dealing with some bowl. And um, each term does have uh, a degree of 2. This one has a degree of 2. These ones each have a degree of 1, which combine to make a degree of 2. And this one has a degree of 2. So it does pass our test. So this is what we call the binary quadratic form. And then this can be represented by some bowl that's centered at the origin, like that. Okay, so those are the two main ones that we're going to be doing examples with, just because it's hard to visualize um, larger quadratic form matrices, but you can understand that as we get, uh, as we kind of try to plot paraboloids is the word, like parabola-like objects in higher dimensional space, we're going to have longer and longer quadratic forms to, uh, to describe that shape. Uh, just because you can notice here that we have a single term, because we have a single variable. Well, when you have two uh, variables, we have to have these x squared and y squared terms. But notice we also have to have like a combination term with x and y. So we have to have one of each of the variables x squared and y squared terms, and we have to have this combination term here. So when you have three variables involved, say x, y, and z, then you're not going to only have to have x squared, y squared, and z squared terms, but you need a combination between each of the variables. So you're going to have a xy term, a xz term, and a yz term. So you're uh, what we call a ternary, uh, so the third level, the ternary quadratic form polynomial has six terms because you have to account for all the combinations between uh, the, um, the variables. And of, of course I can't graph the ternary uh, quadratic equation, but uh, because it's going to be in four dimensions, but the general formula is some ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared uh, plus dxy plus exz plus fyz. And this might come in handy later on when we uh, talk about the ternary, uh, which you might so I'll just say ternary over here. But that one can't have a graph. Okay, great. So that's just an introduction to quadratic forms. And that's kind of half the battle here, because representing them with matrices is not too, um, not too hard. 
So I'm just going to throw it out there, uh, what we do, and uh, I'll explain why in a second. So basically, we can, we can express a, uh, some polynomial in quadratic form with the matrix vector multiplication x transpose sx, where x contains all the variables in your quadratic form, so it's a vector, and s contains all your coefficients, and s is a symmetric matrix. But this, might, this is obviously really you know, abstract, so let's just start with some example and then see as we expand this out what polynomial we get. Uh, so I guess maybe the first thing to convince you of is that this actually does evaluate into a scalar or a polynomial, um, and that's because this uh, vector here is going to have some dimensions, uh, well, let's start with this, this is going to have some dimensions m by 1, this is going to have some dimension because it's symmetric, so it's square is going to be m by m, and this one's going to be uh, m1 transpose, so it's going to be 1 and m. So these m's are going to combine, so we're going to get something that's m1, and then we're going to get something that's 1m, and then these will combine, we get something that's 1, 1. So this does evaluate into a scalar, um, so to convince you of that, that is true. But why does this evaluate into some sort of quadratic polynomial? Let, well, let's see. So let's see if we can try to expand this out and get to the binary. Um, <clears throat> let's get to the binary uh, polynomial, uh, polyno uh, <laughs> quadratic form. So that means we're going to have two variables in our vector because we have x and y. So we know that our x is going to look like this. Uh, and we know that our symmetric matrix S, well, we don't really know what that looks like because we don't really know how that works yet. So let's just uh, put some random kind of generic terms in here. So A, B, B, C, right? Because I put these two Bs there because it has to be symmetric. So this is going to be our X. This is going to be our S. So let's just try multiplying these in this kind of form and see what we end up getting. So it should be some sort of polynomial, but is it what we want? Well, let's see. So X transpose is going to be some X, Y. S is going to be some A, B, B, C, and X is going to be some X, Y. All right, so let's multiply these out. So this A, B goes with the X, Y, so we're going to get, uh, these are going to value to a vector, so let's do these first. So it's going to be A, B with X, so it's going to be A, X plus B, Y, and then this with this, so it's going to be B, X plus C, Y, B, X plus C, Y, and then we're going to multiply this, sorry, I forgot the vector there, by X, Y. So this is actually just two vectors, so we're going to just take the dot product. That's basically what we're doing here. So we're going to get some x of ax plus by plus y bx plus cy. And notice this is already some polynomial, so we just expand this out, distribute the terms. So we're going to get some ax squared plus bxy plus bxy plus cy squared. And we can just combine those two middle terms, and we finally get ax squared plus 2bxy plus cy squared. So that's our final polynomial, which you can see is a polynomial. And more than that, you can actually see that this is clearly a polynomial in quadratic form, a binary quadratic form, because we have three terms, and each term has a degree of 2. The only difference between this and this is that we have this, uh, this kind of term in the middle with 2. So you can notice that uh, in this matrix vector multiplication, when we expanded it out, uh, this A worked out, right, because this is just A, and then this C worked out, because this is just a C. Forgot that there. I forgot that. Um, so that's just going to be a C there, so that works out. But notice that this middle coefficient B gets duplicated, and you can kind of think of that because there's two Bs in here. So in general, when we're expressing some uh, quadratic form polynomial with a matrix, all the coefficients that are off the diagonal in this symmetric matrix S will be duplicated in the resulting um, in the resulting equation. That might be a little weird, but let's look at this ternary example. It's a bit of a mess, but let's see uh, how we can kind of represent this. And I won't do the full example because it'll take too much time, but how we can e express this with a matrix vector uh, multiplication. So now our x uh, vector is going to be x, y, and z, right? So that's going to be our x transpose. And our symmetric matrix S will be a, and then, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so the ones along our diagonal are the ones associated with our squared terms. Just like what we did here, the ones along our diagonal A and C are the coefficients associated with our squared terms. So here, A, B, and C will be our A, B, and C are our squared terms. But all the things off the diagonal, so all the ones associated with the combination terms, so D, D, 
EE and FF. And then we have obviously our other X, Y, Z. If we kind of, uh, if we multiply that out, and I won't, this will take too much time, but this equals AX squared plus BY squared plus Z, CY squared, C, Z squared, which that looks good so far, right? That's kind of what we were expecting. So you can just plug in the coefficients you want for A, B, and C along the diagonal. But then once you start getting to the combination terms, you start seeing a similar thing you did here. So you're going to start seeing some 2DXY plus 2EXZ plus 2FYZ. So notice that all these combination terms are going to have a 2 on them, and you can kind of think about why that is, is because all these coefficients are off the diagonal, and so there's two of them. So basically all the coefficients that are duplicated uh, or mirrored in the symmetric matrix will end up being um, kind of multiplied by 2 in this resulting polynomial. So really, if you want, a, uh, if you want some polynomial that doesn't have these 2s, so it just has these coefficients d, e, and f, then you're really going to have to do e divided by 2, e divided by 2 here, and d divided by 2, d divided by 2, f divided by 2, f divided by 2. So basically all the things in the off diagonal will have to be uh, divided in 2 so they evaluate nicely. So I guess I'll just rewrite this a little nicer. So you're going to have some a, b, c, so that's all good. You don't have to change those, but these are going to be some d over 2, d over 2, e over 2, e over 2, and f over 2. Sorry, I put those in the wrong place. E over 2 and f over 2. So that's going to be how you design those coefficients and then that's how you do it for this one as well. So if you want to end up with some polynomial that wasn't 2 but just bxy then you're going to have to do in this uh, matrix right here you're going to have to do b over 2 and b over 2 and all the ones on the diagonal are fine. So that's kind of generally how you can uh, use matrices to kind of simplify uh, the expression for a quadratic form. It might seem a little dumb right now, with like a binary or even a unary, because these are so short already, and maybe even a ternary, you can just write that out. But when you get more and more and more, it's almost exponential, uh, the amount of terms you keep getting. Because for each variable you add, you have to have all the combinations between all the terms. So this kind of uh, matrix way of showing things, x transpose sx, start to make a lot of sense. But there actually is a much more important kind of reason to use this, and that's to actually understand the matrix S geometrically itself, which we'll be covering in the next uh, lecture as a way to introduce a positive semi-definite and positive definite matrices. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.